Welcome to Wire Guild. The tutorial I'm going to do is an ear cuff tutorial and I've called it the bow because it looks, as you can see, very much like uh, a bow from a bow and arrow. The materials, it will depend on how you want to make it. You may want it bigger or smaller. But approximately 9 inches of 18 gauge or 1 mil round wire, use dead soft. A focal bead, some littler accent beads, just a scrap of half round wire, just something you've got left over from another piece. And a couple of foot of 24 or 26 gauge round wire, whatever you've got. So this is my 1 mil wire and I'm just going to give it a rub with a cloth. Um, an ear cuff needs to be reasonably strong and secure. As you can see from this one, we've got the pattern up the front, but this is the most important bit, the bit on the back. This is the bit that holds it onto our ear. Now, if that's not firm, that bit there, it's not going to stay on the ear at all. So no matter what you do with the front, whether you have little beads and curls and binding and wrapping, that's not going to make any difference unless that piece at the back is, you know, we've started off correctly. So, to get the right size, you need to really find out how big your ear is. I know it sounds a bit silly. I've got a little tiny bit of cardboard here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to draw a rough shape of an ear. Now if you wish you can get a piece of paper and put this onto your ear and trace around your ear so that you've got your actual shape and everything of your ear on the piece of paper. You will have a thinner part just on the edge and that is the bit that the ear cuff goes around. Now I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to sort of tuck it in that bit there I'm going to go over my ear and round the back. So I'm going in there, round this narrower part of ear, and then round the back of my ear. And I'm using the piece of paper to actually measure that distance. So if I do that now and I pop that in my ear and wrap it round the back, when you're going around the back, you need to go, you know, round the back. So that is my length, so I'll just rip that off so I know that that now, when curled over, is the length that I need to make the holder for the ear cuff. Now, because I like working on paper, because it makes life easier, I can mark those two points. Now that measures, it's about one and a half inch. Um, if I'm making these for selling, I usually do them at one and a half inch. I haven't come across anybody that's needed one bigger than that. And you can always squeeze them up a bit to make them smaller. So I've got my ear height, because that's roughly the size of my ear. I've got the dimensions now that I need to go inside and round the, the edge of the ear. And that is these two here. My wire is going to form a like an S shape if you like in between these two lines so if I get the middle point which is roughly there that's good to sit on the middle of my ear and then I'm going to curl these around to make the cuff so if I get roughly the middle point of my wire which will be four and a half inches there we go and I sit that on that central point there. I can then get my round nose pliers and just grip the wire on that line there. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom of the pliers, I'm probably about halfway down. But that will depend on the size of your pliers. Wubbers are quite large. So if you've got some very small round nose pliers, you may need to be further up. So there we go, that's oops turn it the way up. That's one side of my S and I've gripped the other one where the other line is and I'll create another bend so that this goes backwards. So there we go, I have got, whoops, turn it over, 
there we go, a nice S shape that's going to be the right size to fit on my ear. Okay. You need this to be firm. If it's not firm, it's a bit floppy at the moment, it won't work. So bring it together in the middle. It's sometimes easier if you pass the wires sort of over the top and then you can grip and just ease that wire down so that it sits parallel with the other one and then the same on the other side where they meet in the middle. Now I've got some half round wire at this 21 gauge. It really doesn't matter. Any piece of scrap wire will do. Obviously half round is easier. I put my nice little bend in it. There you go, so it's nice and sharp. And I'm just going to pop that over that central part where everything can be nice and close together. And just wrap around. Flatten it down with my pliers. And go around again. There we go. If you don't have any half round, a small piece of, of um, round wire will do just as well. I've gone round about three or four times and I'm just going to trim that off nice and close and press it down. And the same on the other side. Trim that off. Now what you have now is almost like a um, you've tied a bow on a, a parcel and you have these two loops that stick out either side and then you have the end wires, these and they're the ones we're going to make our design from think about that as going up the ear these two loops eventually will be shaped around so that they hang on to the ear so when you, you've traced your ear and you've done a drawing, you can always manipulate afterwards. You've got to think, if your ear cuff is going around this sort of... It's not a very good ear, I aren't that brilliant at drawing. But if it's going to go around this area here, your design, if it sticks forward like that, if, if you know, and you did a dangle and a bead, it's going to actually sort of be very uncomfortable and sit over the ear. However, if it goes up and down like that, very similar to this bow shape that we're making, it sits very nicely. If you want this very heavy and you're going to put a lot of larger beads on it, you're going to have to make something that will curl around the top of the ear. So your wire would have to be longer and you would just literally put a curl and it would clip over the top of the ear and it would give you the extra support. When I put this one on you can see how that will go on the ear. They don't want to be too big and they don't want to be too heavy because they will fall about. You want them to stay on. I've used a little tiny briolette in the middle because of course that's the strongest bit. Now then, I'm going to bring both my wires to one side. So I'm going to put a curl there and then because I want this wire going the same way I'm going to do a curl the other way. If the curl has worked too far from the bindings you can put your round nose pliers in and just keep twisting it up and it will move it closer to the piece. Don't worry about these matching, they're not meant to match, it's okay. So that wire is going to go that way and this wire is going to go this way. No just straighten that, move it a little bit further in, there we are. Remember these two lugs that are, lugs, <laughs> sorry, uh, the two loops that are stick sticking out are going to go across the ear so your design is going to go up and down from them. I've got some 0.4mm or 26 gauge uh, just silver, fine silver wire and I'm going to wrap it around one of my wires 
just two or three times so that it gets a nice firm anchor point because we don't want it undoing and I've slid that into place now I'm just cutting it off the reel because obviously I can't thread a bead on if it's still attached to the reel you could use any bead you want here you could use round ones or bicones or anything really I do like uh, briolettes because I like the way it sort of sticks out to one side I've got some little amethyst briolettes here um, that's what I used on the cop one however I've got these weird little um, green pearls and they're almost like briolettes let's just see what one of those looks like so find the hole and pass your wire through Oops come back now I'm getting sorry about this there we go the wire to the other side and actually that that's kind of nice I like that I don't think we'll bother with the amethyst ones I think I'll use the uh, I think I'll use this little pearl it's rather sweet I like the way that they're a little bit um, irregular shaped so I'm wrapping around two or three times just to get that so it's nice and in place now let's just curve these back a little bit now look at that on the ear that's not going to work the, these wires are going off the ear they're not staying within the shape so if I just curve those around you can see how that suddenly is fitting so much better with the shape of an ear. Now let me just do round nose pliers. That's going to be the bottom and I'm going to put another bead down at the bottom. So I need a loop for the bead to sit on. So oops sorry, taking it out of shot. I'm just gripped there and I am making a little loop with my pliers it's almost like a teardrop shape I haven't bothered to try and make it circle and that wire is going to go back and then taking the fine wire out of the way because I'm getting it twiddled let's just move that so it sits parallel there we go just straighten that up doesn't matter about these being too um, fitting perfectly because we're going to bind them together. Once we bind them, it will pull the wires together. So let's do the other side. You want it to be near enough the same level. So a good way of doing it is if you find your middle spot, put a line there. Put the bead over the... Oh, sorry, I've already drawn there. There we go. Put a line for your centerpiece and then put another line at the bottom where you've just put your curl then when you turn it over you can just mark it onto the wire or just grip with your pliers in the same spot and then do another nice little teardrop shape loop above this will give you roughly the same different distance between top and bottom obviously if you don't want to do the same difference if you want the one at the top to go much higher or you want the one at the bottom to go lower that's perfectly all right as well so the wires already on this side now I'm going to do the difficult side first because the wires already there I'm going to start and I'm going to wrap around both wires three times however that makes it then awkward for me because I'm having to go in through the piece rather than having an open end to work with it is easier to work with an open end and when we get around to doing the other side you'll see but we're not doing miles and miles of this so it really doesn't matter remember to keep your pliers there you want these wires tucked up tight and close and sometimes it's easier to do that with pliers than it is to do with your fingers 
Fingers tend to have a little bit of give in them. Pliers don't have that with them being metal, so of course you can grip harder, firmer, and you can smooth things to where you want them to be. So I am wrapping around one single wire three times. That's why I'm going in through the middle. So the wire that's closest to um, the bottom or closest downwards, I am now wrapping around three times. And I'm using my pliers to get those nice and close. Once I've gone around three times, I wrap around both wires all the way over the top also three times. Back in through our little hole carefully. Can you see how I'm supporting the wire with the middle finger of my left hand as I do it? That stops it sort of unraveling, keeps it nice and tight while I'm doing it. And I'm pulling that through. So I'm going to do three times around the single wire, which is the bottom wire. And then I'm doing three times all the way around. One, two, and close that up. If you wanted to change this up you could maybe do three or four wraps round. You could do a five wrap round and then only one going through the middle. It would give you a totally different look. It's a really good thing to experiment with because you can see how tiny differences with the way that you're weaving it makes a lot of difference to the way it looks. You might be wondering why I've chosen to weave. Why not just make wiggles of the wire? You could do. However, I have found that by weaving two wires together, you add an awful lot more strength to the piece. You don't want so much weight, but you do need strength. If you're going to be selling these, you don't want your customers bending them out of the shape the first time they've put them on. So added stability and strength is a really good idea. So I'm back to wrapping round. You know what I think what I might do is just speed the film up a little bit now because you've got the idea of what I'm doing and I'm going to keep doing the same thing until I get to the end where the little loop is and then I'm going to add another bead like a little accent bead you could go for a totally different colour, you can go for whatever, but just don't make the bead too big. I'm going to use um, little 4mm beads when I get there. If you start using something like an 8mm or a 10mm bead, not only is it going to stick up an awful long way from your ear, but it's also going to be uncomfortable and heavy to wear. This is really only resting on a clip. It's not even like an earring where it's actually going through a piercing. It's, it's not going to do that. So you don't want too much weight in there. Now I've got to the point where I'm right up to my circle. Now I just squeeze that up really well with the pliers because I want to make sure that I can't possibly get any more wraps on and that they are not loose. So now I am just wrapping around the single wire going in and I'm going to add my bead. So there we go, we've got the first side done. Now I'll just straighten that end up. These are teeny little 3mm, are they 4mm, 3mm? 3mm I think, 3mm peridot. They go very well with those um, those little pearls and I'm just going to slide that all the way down so that it sits on top of the loop that we made. If you like these, you know these tiny little um, seed beads, teeny 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 ones, you know that you do the weaving with, you can add these all along and they look great. So when you were doing your weaving you could say do three wraps all the way around and maybe a middle wrap could hold one of those little beads so that it sat along the edge like a little frill. That would look lovely. So I've put the bead on, gone round three times and now I'm going to snip off my wire. 
and using pliers that have a pointed nose because it's so much easier to just push that wire around and that's all finished off. So that's side one. So let me just bend that wire up and out of the way so it's not getting in the way of the other side. And you will see now how much... Oh, I've got a spare bit there. That was from where I started, where we cast it on, if you like. So I'm just going to trim that back and press that end onto the main wires. OK, other side. With the other side, I am going to start where we put the bead on and work the other way around. So I'm going to wrap around the wire two or three times making sure that I've got a nice firm anchor point lovely, get those all nice and squeezed together and then I'm going to slide them into the area where the bead's going to sit through the bead if I can find the hole in it funny little bead, it's got a little dimple in it which I thought was the hole and it's not there we go so bead on hold it in place wrap around probably two or three times to make sure that the bead's nice and secure there we go yeah, push that up. And when you get to the point where the circle that we made to put the bead on has ended, or the teardrop shape has ended, you can actually wrap all the way up and around three times. Let's just move that. That's better. And wound you go one two, three, whoops, in we go, in the middle. Now, I'm going to go around the other wire three times, which is just a single wire. Sorry, I've got my wire caught on a pair of pliers. Let me just move that out of the way. Slide them up, just like I did before. It's just this side is so much easier because I've got easier access when it comes to doing the three wraps that are just going around one wire. So it just goes in there, one, two, three, all over both pieces, one, two, three, and then back around single one, one, two, three, and I'm going to keep going keep pushing those edges up one, two, three slide it up with the pliers, sorry I've gone out of shot again bring your hands back, come here sorry, there we go now I'm just lifting the bead up so that I can push that wire slightly closer. Don't be afraid to move the wire slightly so that you can get in to do what you need to do. Just make sure that when you're moving them, you're moving them just gently a little bit so you're not grabbing hold of it and bending it at right angles because the problem is if you put a proper sharp bend in it, it's then difficult to, to get it out. I'm getting near the point where I'm going to match the other side now. Let's just go round. That bead is really getting in the way. Get out of the way. I think that will be the last three that goes over the top. I'm just going now on the single wire on the inside and then trim that wire off. That's it. Okay. 
So the basic framework now is done. Uh, you know, then it's just a case of what you want to do with the two little end bits that we've got left over. Um, let's have a look. I could just do. Uh, oh, let's get rid of that end. And just tuck it in and my pliers. In we go. There we are. So we could make little spirals or we could bend it back over the framework or I could do a little elephant's nose. I do like elephant's noses. That's rather sweet. I could leave it like that. That would look nice. Although I could do probably do with a bit more wire. Let's do the elephant's nose. To make an elephant's nose you grab your end of the wire and you curl it in towards the piece that you're making to make a circle right on the very end. Put your pliers in and bend the whole thing back so that circle sort of rests on itself. Now to me that reminds me, you know when the, the trunk of the elephant it sort of bends it back because it wants to be not. That's what it reminds me of anyway. So there we go. That will be fine. That end piece has just come slightly undone so using my flat pliers I'm going to bend that so the wires touch each other. There we are. And the same on the other side. So curl inwards towards the body of the piece all the way around until the wires touch. Then back in again and bend that back on itself. Push it down to where it ought to be and just close that up so it sits and touches. Make sure they're flat. Now don't worry too much about them being slightly because um, they're not attached. You could either use a bit of your weaving wire and, and firm those up if you wanted but it won't really make any difference. That is still a bit dangly. Can I just tighten that wire there? Now then, I'm going to put another piece of wire. If I can get it through the hole, I'll put it through the hole because it will give me another sort of layer of strength, if you like. I don't think it's going to go through. No, it's not. It's just bending the wire. All right, let's flip it underneath which will give it an extra sort of support. Tell you what, let's, let's do the edges. So I've taken the round nose pliers and I've taken an edge and I've just curled it around. Same on the other side, round nose pliers, take the edge of the loop and curl them. And can you see how they're both curled together, not touching? You've got to get your ear in there. Now that might have firmed things up. Let's just see. Now, give that a tweak because it's not quite ear shape. That top one needs to come round a little bit. Bottom one needs to come forward. There we go. With ear shape. Now, obviously it doesn't matter if it's the left or the right because you just turn the whole thing upside down. It'll work on either ear. So that's my uh, couple one with amethyst and this is my silver one with green pearls and peridot and I'm still not convinced about that. Right let's take that piece of wire back. I know if I add some more tiny beads to where it is fastening to it will just hold the tip of the bead firm. So I'm just going to wrap this through you know that loop that we made earlier to get the both wires going the same way? That's where I'm wrapping through. And it'll just give me a nice strong anchoring point. Now then, let's get some of these. I'm sure you're all bored of hearing me say it, but you can't do it wrong. You can only make a new design with an ear cuff as long as that framework that holds on your ear is strong and firm and curled so that it will go around the ear 
whatever you do above it is just design so whatever you do above it can be anything now I'm just going to add three little tiny beads at the bottom of where the pearl goes and what they're going to do is they will sort of sit on that back edge of the pearl and stop it wobbling and rocking around it looks I could have taken the wire and I could have wrapped the wire around the bottom of the pearl and that would have done the same thing but I think sometimes just wrapping wire around something to make it stay put can look a little bit um, heavy handed especially when it's something light and delicate like this by adding the beads it looks like this was the design all along but in effect they're doing that job for me they're, they're actually stopping that little pearl bead moving about but it looks like it was a design just pull that through now while I do this put in an ear cuff on what you want to do is go over the back of the ear first because that's like the largest bit if you know what I mean so the ear lobe or the, the soft fleshy bit of the ear goes in first and then you just pop it over the cartilage bit that goes inside your ear that way then it'll just sit and you can adjust it there you can actually squeeze it up and tighten it a little or just loosen it if it won't quite go on and then have another go it can't drop off because there's sufficient wire back and front it can't go up and down because your ear is usually shaped now there are bound to be some exceptions to the rule there's bound to be somebody out there that doesn't have an ear that shapes in at any point on the edge in which case they're probably not going to be able to wear an ear cuff but it's like the ear vine that I've done this tutorial for some people just don't have an earlobe you know the soft sort of skin bit that goes from the piercing up the side of the ear and if you don't have one of those you can't wear an ear vine it's just unfortunate it's a case of well, I'm sorry your ears aren't made the right way for one of these now I'm just I've put the beads the wires through the beads and now I'm just nestling the beads into the design <laughs> by just wrapping the wire around the beads themselves and periodically going back through to make sure that everything's anchored in nice and firm and down a little bit of silver wire in between the beads or wrapping around the beads blends the beads with the surrounding metal and makes them look far more like they're meant to be there than if you just wire a bead on and it sits there on its own as a bead so I'm going back through that little curl with this end and I'm going to finish that off trim off the end and fasten it down and then I'm going to do the same with the other side I'm just fasten these down and the same Let me just wrap that through that curl there the more times you link into another part of the piece the stronger you make the piece so if you can link in at any point with another area without it without it looking messy you know it's not like you've got wires sort of all over the place do it because it will make the piece of jewelry that you're making stronger and firmer and harder However, once I've done these, these will go in the tumbler. Uh, they'll go in the tumbler with the rice and they'll go in probably for a day. That pearl now is much more secure. The great thing is I can throw the pearl into the rice with no worries about it damaging it. Uh, the copper one has been oxidised, the silver one hasn't. But they're very nice and you'll find them very, very comfortable to wear as long as your ears are the right shape. So this is on my ear you can see it fits in quite cute goes around the back now I pinned my son down and made him put it on to show that even a different ear it works on 
So that's the silver one and that was the copper one if you want to have a go in copper. But I can't wait to see what you make. Thank you so much for watching. Happy wrapping. <laughs>